Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality and today I wanted to show you how to make some pretty simple little tiny tags. These are inspired by my porch prints uh, that I'd seen on Pinterest. I'll have a link down below for that pin and the ones that she had made were Christmas themed and they were using little tiny words that are pretty much typed in like a old typewriter print. So I came up with my own list of words that were fall themed to go so that I can make little embellishments for my fall Dollar Tree junk journal that I'm working on right now. I have a challenge going on so if you'd like to um, look into that it's going through the 14th of November so there's a little bit of time left if you wanted to join me. So if you want to check out the description box below I'll have all the details for that and yeah so it's using these little words so I came up my with my own list and typed them up into word and kind of put them in like a um, kind of a rough little box and put an orange background behind so I will have a link down below that will take you to my website creativecrafticality.com and I'll have the link to this for the free printable there. So that's what you'll need to for this craft is to print out one of these and then gather some things that you have in your stash. I have a book page. I have this leaf printed paper that I made with some paint. And then I also have these rub on transfers that are from the Dollar Tree. I have some distress ink. I have some our fabric that was also the Dollar Tree ribbon. Um, I have this fun kind of yarn. It's plush yarn. And then I have some round gold eyelets. And they're, I think, probably an eighth inch hole there. So I'm going to use those. You don't necessarily need these. You can just punch a hole in your project and tie them up. Or you could like make little hole covers. Whatever, you know, whatever you have. I just happen to have these in my stash. So what we're going to do is start by cutting the little words apart. And I've got several different they're just all different, so I'll let you read them here if you'd like. <laughs> and I'm just going to start cutting these out. And I'll make three here on this video and probably make the rest of them off camera. I'll do the first three at the top. It says fall inspired, harvest of happiness, and bring on the flannels. So cut those all out. If you happen to have like one of the Tim Holt sticker packs, he has those word word packs you could use those as well but I don't I don't have any of those all right let me open this get that ready now you just need to cut a base so I'll do some of them or a couple of them with the book page and maybe one there's I have this scrap here so I'm going to lay this down here just to see how big I need to make. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut off that extra white space. First I'll do this here and then cut off the white space at the top. And then I'm just going to leave it there so I know how wide to make it. And 
and then the length I'm gonna leave a little bit of length at the top to just kind of cut two corners off like a little tag so maybe a half of an inch to the left of where I'm going or to the right of where I'm going to glue the little word down And I'll go ahead and make another one here, or cut another one, I should say. And let's see, this one will be a little bit shorter. Since the word's a little bit smaller. So those are cut and I'll just need to cut my last one and I'll use this scrap that I had. It was another leaf print. And I think I'll just leave it the width that it is so it'll leave a little bit more room for me to add um, one of my rub-ons. Cut that off. Could possibly add some of the book page behind it if I wanted to just layer it a little bit more. And I may just layer some of that on those two. So let's see. Just a little strip of the book page. And just kind of uh, let's see. Do it a little bit wider. And I actually think I want it torn for this part, so I'm gonna rip rip a piece to go back behind this one here let's see about that all right that and I think I'll use some of this and rip off some of the orange up here to go back behind on these. So they're just kind of layered. Let's do a little bit more here. Just kind of ripping it to where it looks good to me. So that could be however, kind of go at an angle. Look at that. Let's see. Rip a piece off up here. Where there's lots of orange. that. Alright. Now I want to use my distress ink. Oh dear, I guess not. That is really strange. Look at that. <laughs> it's all moldy. That's gross. I don't, I've never seen that before. Have you ever seen that before? It's not, I don't really live in a moisture. That's so crazy. I guess I haven't used this in a while. Okay, let's not use that. <laughs> I'll get my brown distress ink. Just a minute. 
All right, so I found an orange ink it's tangerine clearly better TPC studio that I had in my stash. I have no idea what happened to that. I looked in all my other little square um, distressing see my other colors and none of them are like that. So I don't that is so weird. I don't know. Have you ever had that happen to your distress ink? This is not a distress ink. It's just a stamp ink stamp pad. Um, so which, I mean, really, I'm, the only reason I'm using it is just to go along the edges, so you don't necessarily need distress ink. So I'm not going to be using anything to blend the color. I just wanted to put some color on the edges of my pieces, so that's what I'm doing. Still going to use a little pad. Go along and just add some ink here on my edges. That's so weird because, I mean, all stamp pads are, you know, most, you know, the ink is moist and most of my, my ink pads are like on the verge of drying out completely so I have no idea how that would have gotten moldy like that because it's not all my stuff is really dry it's not like I had any water damage for anything and that was in a container of all my other distress inks so you would think it would happen to all of them not just the one so I don't know that's so bizarre So, okay, almost done here, just have to do my last little set. Let me down, know down in the comments, are you still working on fall stuff or have you moved into your Christmas? I'm, I'm working on both right now. I'm working on this journal for my series and then I'm also working on strawberry shortcake journals, Christmas journals. So I'm almost done with those. I'm just putting them together, getting them ready to be sewn. So, and then... I'm not sure what I'm going to do after that um, because I have to start getting ready for my own Christmas and everything. Do my Christmas cards and things like that. Okay, so all of that's done and now we just need to glue the pieces together. So I'm just going to lay this out and see how I want it here. Just kind of layering them. Um, yeah, and I haven't really decided where I'm going to put the, the rub-ons. Maybe I'll put a leaf there and just kind of layer that right there. So I'll do the transfer first before I glue the word down. I have a leaf here, so I'll just go ahead and use that. And use my scissors here to rub it on. I think this rub on transfer set is probably one of my favorite sets that I had this year. I don't know if they'll have any for Christmas, I'm hoping. Okay, and then I'll put this down there. Some glue. Kind of at an angle, I'm going over the little leaf a little bit. And then I'll 
I want to cut the corners off this, which probably means I'll have to use my ink again on those edges. Okay, got that done. I'm going to get them all to the point um, to where I just have to punch the holes and put the eyelets in. So let's go ahead and work on this one. Glue down. Oh, another thing I'm going to use is some safety pins. I have the light bulb safety pins. I need to grab those because I'll do a couple of them with the safety pins and then maybe one of them with a ribbon or the yarn. I'm not sure. I just I brought out what I thought I would use and if I don't use it all then that's fine. Okay, so I have I'll use this leaf right here. One there. So put that on. All right, and on to the next one and final one. Glue this on. And I think I'll put the hole over on this side. That'll leave some empty space over there um, for another leaf. And I'll use this one here, I think. Whoops. Okay. Okay, I'm going to trim the little corners again. You need to, you don't have to do this part. I just like that. Like the look of the trimmed corners. And then I'll use my I have a crocodile, and if you don't know what that is, it's something from my scrapbooking days. They still sell them. I'll put a link down below if you'd like. But it has two size hole punchers, and then in the middle is where it sets your eyelet. And it's a We Are Memory Keepers. Um, and it works really well because it's a lot easier of a squeeze to squeeze a hole and you can 
punch holes through several layers, even like I've done it through chipboard, like the thick chipboard. So when I make my uh, little golden book journals, this is what I use to make the holes. If I do a three, like a binder ring um, spine. So yeah, so you definitely don't need it for this, of course, because you're just using paper, but it's the biggest hole is a little bit smaller than a regular hole punch like that you would buy at the office supply store or whatever. So it's just know that that's a little bit smaller. And I think it's, I don't know, I think this is 3 sixteenths and that one says 1 eighth. So I don't, I think that's the whole size. I'm not sure, but you'll see here how big it is. So that's how big it is, if you can tell. So I'm going to do that on all of these. Didn't get that one all the way punched. Usually doesn't happen. Oh, well, there. Okay, now I just need to put put the eyelet in there like that, and then you put it in between the two and squeeze it, and then it sets it in there. And it's a lot easier than using the little hammer. I have one of those, and that's what I started out with, and then ended up getting this. Now sometimes I find that some of the eyelets that you squeeze, it kind of messes them up, and then you have to redo it. Just depends on how what the quality of the of the eyelet is. Um, I don't know what the quality of these are. They seem to be okay. I, I just had them in my stash, so. It's, it's doing a pretty good job on these. I'm doing the last one here. Alright. Just make sure. Yeah, that did really good. All three of them there. And now I'm going to I'm going to add a strip of this fabric. I'm just going to tear it. Just a little tiny strip. And let's see how I'm going to do this. I don't know if I can go in and put the ends through. See here. Just wanna make their make them even. But you know what? This is bring on the flannels. I think I want to use that ribbon. You know the flannel ribbon from the Dollar Tree? I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll use that in one of the other ones. But So I have a little bit left of this. Just a tiny bit. This was my favorite. It's like a flannel, sort of. Just completely... There's no wire or anything in it. So let's see if I can get this through. Yeah, I shouldn't have any problem getting it through. I don't think I could do the... The other. I think I'm just going to tie a knot in this. Or, you know what? Better yet, I'm going to use some of the this plush yarn because it's the same color. Just have to find the end here. Here it is. Cut myself a piece and. Just 
tie a double knot around it, kind of secure the ribbon. There we go. All right. And then trim that off. Oops. Yeah. And I'm going to just kind of clean this up a bit here. All right. a little bit shorter. There we go. That is super cute. I love that. It could totally add more. Actually, that kind of gets lost, that little leaf. So I think I'm going to... Hmm, should I put another... Hmm, I don't know. I kind of need something dimensional on there. So I might bring in my little sequins and put a sequin on there. All right, and then I'll use this one and the other one. Another one, I mean. Let's see here. Just, I put the loop through the hole, down through the bot, the t down through the top, and I'm going to bring it up and put the two ends through. Oh, no! Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, that's not going to work. It worked on that one. I was just a little too... I pulled it too tight. Okay, I just ripped... Ripped my little tag. Okay, that didn't work. So let's see, what can I do here? I'm going to turn this off. We will make the best of it. It's going to go off that way. And then... I'm going to punch a hole in the other end, and this is what's going to do. Let's see, I'm going to use the bigger one, and this will be fine. It'll all be fine. Okay, so I need to use another one of my... Oops. There we go. Okay. All is good. Make my little... You never knew. Okay. So, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to rip another one. So, I'm just going to pull this through. Maybe we'll tie a knot. See how that works. Should be fine. All right. Try another one. I just don't want to be want it to be like a huge giant knot at the end there. But I think that's still good. Okay. Now the last the last one I just want to put uh Oh it just came out. Wow, you guys I'm just not doing very good today. Let me find another. I had a third or a fifth one. Really didn't. I didn't. I didn't squeeze it hard enough, evidently. There we go. I 
think that's good. No? Okay, it's not. Those evidently didn't like to work. Let me find another one here. Alright, a third time's the charm. Let's try this again. See if it's going to work. Maybe I don't have the setting on very well. I don't. Okay, so there's different... I'm wondering if I need to have it... Alright guys, I ended up having to use my hand setter. <laughs> I don't know what was going on with that. I guess I don't recommend the Crocodile for setting eyelets unless you use their specific eyelets. And I have no I have no clue even where those eyelets came from. Just had them in my stash. So anyway, I do recommend it though for punching through thick or many sheets of paper or cardstock. But anyway, I am just putting a little eye light bulb safety pin in that one, like that, so I can hook onto like the side of a page or whatever. These, you could add like a paper clip on the back and just make it like a an altered clip. You could just put a paper clip just on the page and stick that in it, whatever you want to do. Or you could use these as little tags and tiny little pockets. Just a simple little embellishment. And you can add even more. I was thinking, let's see, I have my sequins. There's little orange ones here. And just add one. kind of adds a little bit to it. Find my glue. Or do I want this lighter color? Let's see. It's kind of a rose color. A rose rose gold sort of color. I think I like the lighter color better. If it even needs it. I don't know. Oops. Dab of glue. A little bit more. There. If you had any like little buttons, you could add that or tiny little stickers. Anything really, they're just little simple embellishments. So, hopefully, you enjoyed this tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you did, leave me a comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. Be sure to check out my uh, Fall Dollar Tree Junk Journal Challenge. Everything will be linked down below, as well as the playlist of all the videos I've made. I think this is number 10 at this point, or number 9. I'm not sure. Um, I did come out with one yesterday that was making a little pocket with tag inserts. So check that one out and I will see you again next time. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality. Bye. God bless.